still on motion graph this is my third video on the graphs of motion as applied to motion of a body under gravity now for this video we are looking at the variation of the velocity of a body against time and its displacement when the body is projected vertically upwards so here we have a stone is projected vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second the question says sketch the graph of the variation of its velocity with time and then also the displacement against time now let's say this is the body projected from this point let me call this point the ground and uh, it's giving an initial velocity in the upward direction so the 50 meters per second is a direction recall that velocity is a vector quantity uh, we need to be able to specify or identify both its magnitude and direction the magnitude is a 50 meters per second and the direction is upward so this time i'm going to give positive sign to you know represent the direction of the velocity upward or to upward direction and then since the relation to gravity acts downwards g acts downward so i'm going to give it a negative sign of course two directions are not the same so we cannot assign the same sign to them so if i decide to give this positive the direction upward positive then direction downward must be given a negative sign so i have to first of all establish this fact before i draw or sketch my graph now which means at time t equals zero the body has an initial velocity that is non-zero non-zero in the sense that it has an initial velocity of 50 meters per second so which means if i'm to draw the velocity time graph of this body it won't start from the origin in the case of a body that is dropped from rest when t equals zero that was my first video lesson on motion graphs that uh, when t is zero the body's initial speed uh, was zero but in this time when t equals zero the body's initial speed is not zero it is 50. so which means if i'm to now draw or sketch my velocity time graph um i'll draw this that's my vertical axis will have my velocity in meters per second when you draw graph always uh, include the units of the quantity represented on the axis and this is a time and in seconds okay so this object or this body let me call this point here my 50 okay can calibrate it as 10 20 30 so let me call this point 50 meters per second on the velocity axis and uh, of course we said that um, the body was given that speed initially and it starts falling recall that when the body sorry starts rising when the body starts rising it's rising against the direction of gravity and because of that we see the body decelerates the speed of the body reduces and for example suppose uh, maybe one second later when t equals one second what is the speed of this body the speed of this body is going to be equal to now one second later what is the velocity of the body one second after it has been projected we use this equation of motion v equals u minus, minus gt and that gives me 50 minus 10 times 1 that is 40 which means two seconds later by the time we substitute the uh, 2 for t we're going to have uh, 30 meter per second three seconds later, that is uh, put three here that is 10 times 3 which is uh, 30 minus this so which means roughly five seconds later the body's velocity after five seconds or so the velocity of the body will have been what 50 minus 5 times 10 or 10 times 5 which will give you zero at that point you say this body has got to its maximum height that's the highest point on its path of motion and after that point it will start coming down or falling back down so let's represent on this Climaxes, this time or this point where the time is five seconds is where the body is at its maximum height. So, which means the velocity of the body will vary linearly because, of course, this is also this graph shows a linear variation, variation of uh, velocity against t is linear. So, the graph will be a straight line, do not pass into the origin. That gives the variation of this, uh, the velocity of the body that is 
projected vertically upwards with a particular initial velocity. So the, the graph varies linearly, but each graph is going to have a negative slope. The slope of the graph is going to represent uh, g, and this time around, the negative shows the direction we assumed we took for g. The slope of the graph is acceleration. And since uh, this uh, body rises, you know, with negligible air resistance, when so the absence of air resistance, we expect the slope of the graph to be equal to the acceleration due to gravity. So negative sign indicates the sign, the direction we indicated for negative. We took downward direction as negative. And if you want to calculate the height risen by the body, the area under the graph, the height of the body risen above the ground is equal to area under the graph. Of course, you know, this uh, graph has a shape of a triangle. So we use the formula for calculating the area of a triangle. If I'm to find the height reason, I'm going to use half base, half times base times the height. So my height is on the velocity as is. This is my height h, which is gotten from the velocity as is, and the, the base is on the time as is. So from here, you can have h equals half times the base is 5, and then uh, the height is uh, 50. So which means this is uh, this 25. So the body will have risen a distance of 5 times 25, which is 1, 2, 5 uh, meters. So it must have risen after 5 seconds before it comes to rest. So before the velocity decreases to zero, it must have risen a vertical height of uh, 1, 2, 5 meters per second. Now, how does the distance, let's see the variation of the distance or displacement of the body against time for this body that is projected vertically upward how does the distance fall in the displacement how does it vary with time okay so let's draw that and see the vertical axis we have our displacement s we use letter s to always uh, represent displacement and time t in seconds so since this ball starts um, you know from projected vertically upward from the ground uh, we can decide that uh, at t equals zero, the distance reason is zero. So as it starts rising up, it starts rising up in increasing distance. As the distance increases while the ball rises up. So we expect the graph to start from zero because at time t equals zero, the distance reason, the displacement is zero. The body was projected from the ground plane. If I take that point as my reference, so this is so, start from here. Now, and then as it rises, the distance reason increases. But this time around, since the body decelerates while it rises, the distance reason will be decreasing with time so that the graph will eventually look like this. It's a curve. It's not going to be a straight line. You know, that shows that the, this, this body is actually decelerating. This graph shows that the body is decelerating. That is, the speed is reducing. That's why the graph is like this. The other one I did in the uh, first video, when the body is dropped from rest, I said the body falls with increasing velocity because it's accelerating. Means that the distance time graph, I showed it was like this. This shows that this is a case where the body is accelerating. So um, we can interpret acceleration from the distance time graph. And this graph shows that the body is accelerating. The speed is increasing. And hence, the distance covered with time is also increasing with uh, time.